Justin Trudeau's new C63 bill will allow the Canadian government to imprison people for life in order to protect children or to imprison political opponents. What do you think Justin Trudeau and the globalists are more interested in? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom. Remember, you can support our movement by becoming a member. Click the link there, there in the description. Go into it, click it. We make an additional video every week. Last week it was about COVID. Last week we interviewed Rand Paul and talked to him about, you know, COVID, Fauci, the sort of stuff you're interested in and asked questions directly to him that was posted by our members. Become one, support our movement. Otherwise you will end up belonging to a movement run by Justin Trudeau and the Globalist, which proposes that in order to, you know, protect children. And this mainstream media news broadcast seems to suggest the elderly, I don't know what they need to be protected from. Is there a movement? Help the aged. Are there geriatric rings now? Although also in weird, crazy, cuckoo project Canada, there are new ideas to euthanize people for being sad, poor or old. So really, the elderly need protecting mostly from Justin Trudeau. What's going on in the world? Who is Justin Trudeau protecting us from except bloody Justin Trudeau? That's who I want to be protected from. Let's get into this story because whether it's Ireland or the United States or in particular Canada, there are new laws that seem predicated upon impeding free speech. Let's have a look. Internet safety is a subject talked about in most households. Is it? It's especially with vulnerable family members. Tell I'm talking about my household. What's going on with these weird new laws to censor people and shut down dissent? Is there anyone worth voting for anywhere in the world? Especially with vulnerable family members, young kids or seniors. Seniors? I'm not worried about the elderly. I'm not worried about my dad. Dad, what are you doing? Actually, he should be controlled what he puts on the internet. He's a pain in the ass. But generally speaking, the elderly aren't the issue, are they? What they're doing and what they generally do is present a situation where they are our protectors in order to take our power and security. It's such an obvious scheme now. They're such grifters. It's a plain. I can't believe we continue to believe it. The Liberal government is hoping its long-promised online harms bill will help protect people. The latest version is set to be introduced tomorrow. The Liberals' long-awaited online harms bill will be introduced Monday. Why do I keep saying it's long-awaited and long-promised? Like, where's that online harms bill? Quick, my children! Won't somebody please think of the children? That's not the actual issue. You're a person. Trust yourself a bit more. Trust your own instinct and evaluation of your own life. What are your problems? Is it resources? Is it expenses? Is it a crisis of meaning? Is it sort of despair? Is it total distrust and breakdown of society and culture? Is it a kind of weariness from dealing with the deluge of information from people that are telling you that they're protecting you from misinformation that appears to be oddly untrue, like this? The latest in a series of sweeping and controversial internet regulations. Things shouldn't be sweeping and controversial at the same time. If you're going to sweep something, make sure everyone bloody well agrees with it. We need to make sure, and I think we can all agree, we need to protect our kids uh, online. Justin Trudeau, with his various image issues, should not be wearing black leather gloves. I suppose it's good that it's on the hand rather than the face, given that it's Justin Trudeau, but it's a bit too Gestapo for someone who literally awards Nazis in Parliament <laughs> and evokes unnecessary emergency acts, isn't it? The proposed bill is aimed at online companies. They've put a hooded figure that looks like them people that Nick C3PO and RTD2 in the first Star Wars film. <laughs> and expected to target hate speech, terrorist content, child exploitation, and the sharing of non-consensual images, both real and AI generated. I bet some of those things there are already laws for, like firstly, aren't there? Like terrorism, I think is already illegal. I think they're already not supposed to be a paedophile. They aren't real required laws. This is what we're gonna do is legitimize censorship by offering you things that you'll agree with, like you want your children safe, you don't agree with hatred and you don't agree with terrorism. Yep, that's everyone in the world thinks that, except for a small marginal lunatics. And then they're going to use that to go, that was critical of, for example, the trucker protest. Look at their actions and look at what they actually care about. They care about being able to freeze people's bank accounts, care about being able to unperson and shut down dissenting voices and seize control of the media. Obvious what the agenda is. This is absolute bunk. All with a significant focus on child safety. The Conservatives say it's an attempt to censor Canadians, while others hope for even stronger digital protections than those expected in the bill. 
Do you know that one of the penalties is life imprisonment? How much stronger can you go than life imprisonment? Justin Trudeau will come round your house and strangle you to death in those black gloves of his while singing Swanee. Swanee. Legislation like this already exists in several other countries, like the UK, Australia, and the EU. What a coincidence. Almost as if these bills are being passed everywhere, as if it's some sort of coordinated global effort. Now, look, you could say more materially and more skeptically, if you want to be all reasonable about it, that the pandemic was a global problem, and so having a global response to a global problem is one interpretation, and the internet is a global phenomenon, so having a global response is, in some ways, sensible. As long as that response is absolutely derived from referenda, as long as it's the response that people want. I mean, as a parent at the moment, when I think, who do I want in charge of protecting my children when it comes to online safety, and basically, actually, all forms of safety, me! That's who's in charge of it. Me, my wife, and people I trust. It's not like, Justin Trudeau, get your gloves on, the kids are playing up, and I want them lot involved in any way. Obviously, the reason that we're concerned about this raft of legislative measures across the world, Ireland, our country, the UK, Canada, EU, as it was listed in the news report, is because of the potential to misuse these laws to impose control on the population of the country. The people that are really regarded as terrorists, we know this because they use techniques, personnel, agencies, technology that have previously been used on terrorists on domestic populations now. It's common, it's global, it's ubiquitous. A good example of a domestic population being treated as terrorists is January 6th. Was that a protest or was it an insurrection? Certainly people have done pretty lengthy jail sentences, in some cases, for simply practicing their right to protest and maybe going a bit over the edge. Well, a decision from a federal appeals court could potentially affect the sentences of dozens of January 6th rioters. Now, the court ordered a new sentence for a man from Grapevine who stormed the Capitol, saying a judge wrongly applied an enhancement that made his sentence longer. The U.S. Attorney's Office says that same enhancement has been applied in more than 100 other January 6th cases. What this story essentially is, is that the law, even as written, has been misused in this instance, and people have served undue sentences, really, because they wanted to make an example of people, didn't they? They've realised, hold on a minute, if this demographic, like working class, blue collar people, significant portion of the population becomes disobedient, we got a serious problem, because guess what? We need those people to be in our police force, we need those people to be in our army, we need those people to control themselves. So we better really make an example of them. I'm minded of like about 10 years ago in this country, there were riots and there was a load of looting and stuff like that. And what was weird is they started in London as a response to the death of a man in police custody in Tottenham, North London. But then they sort of spread and they were happening all over the country. So it's almost like this discontent had a kind of contagion or meme appeal. And I think part of the function of the systems that we're currently losing our faith in, institutions of democracy and media, are about ensuring that we don't all spontaneously just go, none of this is working, is it? Should we start really playing up? So whenever something a bit off colour happens, like January the 6th or the riots in my country, the institutions fire up. Suddenly, they work really quickly. If you ever tried to get a permit to, like, I don't know, cut a tree or mend something or get some tax that you owed, we'll be back to you in 6 to 12 to 18 months. If you could write to this person, if you could fill in a form. Try filing a Freedom of Information Act request. See how long it takes for the government to tell you how much they've been spying on you, as I've been doing lately. It ain't like, right, here you go, there's your information, let's go make it rain, start breaching a few velvet ropes in the capital, suddenly the institutions of government move pretty quickly. So Canada introducing and applying for these new laws. Ireland asking for these new laws. UK passing these laws. EU wanting to pass these laws. It tells you something. They're gearing up to control you. If the ruling stands, defendants who have not completed their prison terms may push for new sentences. He's not doing himself any favors, is he? He's dressed up a little bit paramilitary, but hey, if dressing up was a crime, I'll tell you, he would be in prison. Justin Trudeau. As you know, we're very careful to select partners that we know you're going to love. And today, I couldn't be more excited to tell you that this episode is sponsored by Halo, the number one prayer app in the world. I know this because I use this app every single day to pray the rosary. But there are 10,000 other prayers, meditations, and musical choices often voiced by Christian speakers and actors. For example, one of the main voices on there is Jonathan Rumi. He plays Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in The Chosen, which is pretty amazing. And he was my body double when I was in Ballers, which is a good show that I loved being in. This is brilliant. Hallow has been downloaded 
downloaded over 4 million times in 150 countries. Halo helps you to pray, meditate and sleep better. It helps you build a daily routine and a habit of prayer. I mean, it's literally it's on my phone. Even before I was doing this advert, I'm listening to it every day because of Jonathan and because I'm interested in learning more about Christ and Christianity and how Christian values align with my challenges, my personal challenges and my deep faith. And it's such an amazing app. You're going to love it. Now, check this. It's about to be the start of Lent, the 40 days that lead up to Easter in the Christian church, where we're called to give more intense prayer, fasting and almsgiving. I'm going to learn about this with Hallow. This Lent, Hallow's doing a special prayer challenge called Pray 40, meditating on this incredibly powerful book called He Leadeth Me with the theme of surrender, trust and hope. Who doesn't need those things? The challenge is being led by Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that's right. That Mark Wahlberg. Jonathan Rumi, Jesus is my body double, and Father Mike Schmitz and several other faith leaders and actors and stuff. It's going to be really powerful, so I invite you to download Hallo for three months for free at hallow.com forward slash brand and join me in joining the Pray 40 Challenge. I've already bought the app myself. I'm not going to be able to take advantage of that off but you should. God bless you. Let's get back to the video. Canada's Justice Minister Arif Virani has advanced a highly controversial bill named Bill C-63, proposing comprehensive new legislation aimed at addressing online hate speech. The bill covers seven types of harmful material, from content sexually exploiting or re-victimizing children and survivors, to content promoting violence and extremism. But it also outlaws online hatred, so-called hate speech, and forms of deep fakes. Also, they're doing the classic bureaucratic bunch together, where they take something that anyone would agree with. For example, if there is a requirement for new legislation to protect children, I'm sure everyone, except for some real, let's call them out there characters, will be totally down with, yeah, laws to protect children from predators and menace. Get those laws done. But notice how they bunch it together with, like, hate speech. So while you're looking at this, we all agree with, they just push us through on the slide. Also, we don't want anyone criticising Justin Trudeau or the use of the Emergency Act or the freezing of the bank accounts or the tendency towards globalization and the inability for countries to democrat. That's what's interesting and important. Let's separate the issues at the front of this, like child safety, from some of the issues like free speech. In an attempt to decrease the prevalence of harmful content, this legislation puts the onus on online platforms to be accountable and transparent about how they handle such content. Platforms like social media and live streaming services are included under the legislation's online services umbrella. Oh, live streaming. You've noticed that, have you? Like, this is a new a emergence of a new phenomena. They're like, oh no, there's whole new markets. This is probably related to the total collapse in trust and use of legacy media outlets. They're realizing, oh no, it's moving quicker than we can. Quick, trap it, stomp it down, censor it, control it, surely. The bill would also create a new standalone hate crime offense that would apply to every offense in the criminal code and in any other act of parliament, allowing penalties of up to life imprisonment to denounce and deter this hateful conduct as a crime in itself, the briefing explained. Well, that's actually confusing. Standalone alone hate crime offence that would apply to every offence in the criminal code. So it seems to me like they're creating a bit of legislation that seems quite diffuse, oddly amorphous, and could be applied, it sounds like here, to any other law. Also, you did that hate crime. It sounds like they're trying to find ways to shut down dissent and control information, which is obviously something we're seeing a lot of. The proposed law would also raise the maximum punishments for the four hate offences from five years to life imprisonment for advocating genocide, and from two years to five years for the others when persecuted by way of indictment. It's interesting that there's a new law being introduced. Like, people might say stuff or type stuff about a genocide, but that isn't the same as doing a genocide. And given that we are living through what many people regard to be a genocide right now, why the hell are Canada more interested in people advocating for genocide than people actually committing them? If you're doing a genocide, get your missiles! Get your missiles! You don't even have to pay, actually, because we'll make money by replacing replenishing our previous stocks. And if people are saying, saying, oh, those people should be stamped out, like sort of, which isn't the kind of thing that's very nice to say, but it's something that gets said and I don't think should carry a life sentence. The Liberal government states that the bill's proposed regulations centre on the platforms most frequented by Canadians. However, the specifics will depend on whether these platforms meet the eventual user thresholds. Over time, the government may hold other platforms accountable if these platforms end up posing a significant risk of harm. So they've built into it the possibility that people are just going, oh, stop using that 
platform is over-regulated, start using this one. We're on a platform that is free speech absolute. And that platform, therefore, suffers unduly. That's why you should support us on that platform. That's where we make our daily content. That's where you can support us, become a member. Additionally, Bill C-63 proposes establishing a censorship organization which will oversee digital safety issues. Oh, I bet they will. Where are they going to draw those people from? How is it going to be funded? What will their tastes be? What their inclinations and political affiliations be? We just know that we've lived through the two most censored events in history. The COVID-19 pandemic, heavily censored incorrectly. It has been retrospectively admitted. Kind of establishment on that, you know, asked for a bunch of things to be censored that in retrospect ended up being more debatable or, or true. And the current ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia and its mysterious origins, not to suggest again, as I always say, that the Ukrainian people dying in a war is a terrible thing. But the fact is, is that information is already being heavily controlled. If you facilitate that further, you're playing into the hands of a system that's already heading in that direction. Highlighting the Trudeau government's actions during the pandemic, Polyev remarked Justin Trudeau said anyone who criticised him during the pandemic was engaging in hate speech. This statement underscores a fear that the governments might use the proposed legislation to silence dissent in various scenarios. I think that's almost inevitable. What Trudeau's doing in Canada should terrify everyone in the Western world who cares about being free from government tyranny, censorship and disinformation. That's because Trudeau is pioneering a new way for governments to take control over the information environment, spreading disinformation and demanding censorship that is similar but different to efforts we are seeing in places like California, Australia and New Zealand. It's truly a global issue. It appears to be built around a pre-agreed global structure. No doubt when they have these conferences, WEF for example, agreements like this are are refined, suggested, and a kind of consensus is agreed upon. Otherwise, why would this be happening? People across the Western world were rightly alarmed when Trudeau invoked for the first time in Canadian history the Emergency Measures Act and froze bank accounts of people who had simply donated to the truckers' cause. Trudeau's crackdown on the Freedom Convoy protesters was followed by efforts to regulate and control the internet. His Online Streaming Act and Online News Act gave the government expansive new powers to regulate what happens and what you see online. The atmosphere created by Trudeau and his party is completely completely upending Canadian society, leading to the persecution of his detractors and limiting speech and expression. If we see more laws like this, we will see more problems like this. And as we keep illustrating and reiterating, it's happening everywhere. Have you not noticed that our politicians seem similar, seem to have a similar agenda, seem to be funded in similar ways, seem to have comparable interests, even right down to their hobbies, haircuts, dress sense, and global conferences that they attend. In looking to defend minorities and promote culture, Trudeau's liberals are everything they once feared. They are authoritarian, anti-democratic, and illiberal. And what's happening in Canada is not separate from what's happening in the US, the UK, Europe, and Brazil, but intimately connected to those nations. Trudeau isn't so different from President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Governor Gavin Newsom, and most other Democrats in the US. The difference is, is that he's ahead of them. Yes, and if you consider, say, the truckers' protests and then consider the events of January 6th, and even something like the burgeoning support among truckers in New York. These, I imagine, are actually the issues that they would like to address with new legislation. I actually don't think they care that much about protecting your children. Certainly, there are many rumours that there are many in the political class that have the exact opposite view. According to Justin Trudeau and his Liberal Party supporters, he and their party are the party of compassion for vulnerable people, freedom and Canadian culture. Liberals care in their view, while Conservatives don't care. Trudeau has proclaimed his loyalty to the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And when the Liberals introduced their social media reforms legislation, they said the goal was to promote Canadian culture, ensure the sustainability of the news industry and guarantee we heard from marginalised voices. But a government cannot claim to care about the vulnerable or about freedom while freezing the bank account of a single mother working on a minimum wage job, as Trudeau's government did. Nor can the government claim to care about the vulnerable or freedom while trying to regulate the internet to prevent further protests and challenges to Trudeau's government. Trudeau constantly splits the population into liberal angels and conservative devils. You either believe in liberal climate policy or are a climate denier, according to Trudeau. You either mask up and vax up or are putting lives at risk. You either support the radical demands of trans activists or you hate sexual minorities. Trudeau's actions aren't about social progress. They're about power and control. Trudeau embodies many of the traits of left-wing authoritarians. All authoritarians support censorship and submission. They tend to believe this is necessary because in their minds, the population is naive and cannot be trusted. Perhaps this focus on children is an unconscious declaration of the more deep intent at play that we are all regarded as children in so much as we are denied the right to true autonomy in the way that a child has to be protected, in the way that any parent 
parent would take personal responsibility if they can for the welfare of their children rather than deferring that to the state, particularly when it seems that the state do not truly understand the power that they're playing with and in whose hands they are truly placing this power when they create diffuse laws that bundle together the safety of children online, the elderly online, when they're not euthanizing them at the first sign of sniffles, and the control and removal of hate speech, which impedes on rights which are necessary in democracy when they say that democracy is the thing they prize above all else. So, do these new laws in Canada protect you or do they prevent you from being autonomous and free, having free speech and your rights as an adult citizen? Do these laws that are being passed across the world that bear very similar inflections and contain very similar clauses that are similarly diffuse and could be similarly exploited indicate that whether you are in the United States of America or Brazil or the UK or Ireland, you are now being subject to new measures of control precisely because in these online technologies we have the ability for new true diversity and true representation. I think that's what they fear most of all. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and chat. Remember you can become a supporter of our content by clicking the link in the description. You get an extra video every single week like this week's is on COVID and how politicians are having to admit how crazy it all went. Plus you can join us for conversations with Rand Paul last week. This week it's Mike Benz talking about deep state censorship and exactly this type of power. A conversation that you will love and cherish. Why don't you put your own questions to Mike Benz and join us there. In the meantime, if you can, stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.